swiftly now to our top story this hour, and it is the most shocking story. We can't stop talking about it here at Talk TV. A grieving widow who had her husband's ashes turned into jewellery has now been told that police have found his body in a freezer at a funeral director's. The discovery was made following a raid on Legacy International Funeral Directors in Hull. This is after reports of concern for care of the deceased at three branches of the firm earlier this month. Police have since recovered a number of bodies and suspected ashes as they continue to investigate. We have now recovered a total of 35 deceased who have now been respectfully transported to the mortuary in Hull and formal identification procedures are now taking place. In addition, we have also recovered a quantity of what we suspect to be human ashes. We're in the process of carefully recovering all of those um, ashes and taking those to the mortuary. So far, we are pursuing extensive lines of inquiry and I have specialist search and forensic teams conducting thorough searches at various business premises that are linked to the suspects that were detained this weekend. I can confirm that a man and a woman have been arrested on suspicion of the prevention and lawful uh, and decent burial, fraud by false representation and fraud by abuse of position. They have since been released on police bail with conditions whilst our investigations continue. God, this really is the most awful story. Joining me in the studio right now to discuss it is Talk TV correspondent Oliver whitfield Mirchich. Oliver, this is shocking. I mean, people just can't stop thinking about it, talking about it. And everybody knows that when somebody you love passes away, you have to put the ultimate absolute trust in the funeral directors to be impeccable and immaculate in their respect for the dead, in their attention to detail. And you have to trust absolutely that they will follow in every way the spirit and the letter of decorum and you know, precise exactitude. That's what you're trusting. That's what you're paying them for, isn't it? So this is the most jolting and alarming story. It's honestly shocking because everybody that's lost a relative knows how sensitive a time it is. Mm. You are going through the worst days of your life there whilst also trying to celebrate that person to make sure that they've got a good send off. And the last thing that you want is to think that somehow their bodies have been misplaced or haven't been handed over to you correctly. And the stories that we're hearing from some of the relatives is truly shocking. So you mentioned there the woman who thought that her husband had been cremated. She had brought those ashes home. She then decided that she was going to get jewellery made out of some of the ashes. I think it's crystals or sometimes you can make, get them put into diamonds. She's then called by the police and told, actually, your husband is still in the freezer. And you can only imagine then the thoughts that come. Mm. Well, whose ashes are in the jewellery that I have had made? Why wasn't my husband handed over to me? But it's not only that. When you have a funeral, you get that closure. You get the finality yeah. of saying goodbye. So to get that call then has just opened up all of the wounds, all of the pain and the heartache and all of that sort of emotion that they thought they'd been able to put behind in the past. Absolutely. And also the, the, the idea of rest in peace means, doesn't it, you have a decorous and respectful funeral and then if you're opting for burial or if you're opting for cremation, this happens in a peaceful and orderly manner and the mourners are mourning in the right time, in the right place. And then you know where your beloved nearest and dearest is, either buried in the place that you can then visit and, and, and you know, pay your respects at or cremated and you have the ashes to remember them by. Not lying in a fridge somewhere that nobody told you about for months, maybe years on end. That's not resting in peace. That's the very opposite, isn't it? And then the 35 families that are going through this, they're not alone because the police have said that there has been a thousand phone calls. Because wow. so you can imagine the worry out of everybody else that is impacted by this. The police say that they've got 120 both civilian and police officers who are working on this case, and they've vowed to get back in touch with each and every one of them. But they've now got concerns whether the right body was handed over, whether the coffins were empty, whether the ashes were handed over were actually the ashes of their people. And we've heard from some of the relatives who say they got a call quite quickly because 
the hospital tags were still attached to the body parts of their relatives who were held in the freezer. Oh but God. for others, they're having to go down there to look at different cadavers and see whether that is their relative. Oh my and so gosh. It's, honestly, it, it's, it's totally, totally... So what, Oliver, are the regulations that apply? If, you know, if Joe Bloggs wants to set up a funeral director's a company, can you just do that and announce that that's what you are? Or are there various different qualifications, rules and regulations that you must abide by? You will be shocked to hear this, but it is an unregulated industry. I am shocked. There are courses that you can take, of course, for the embalming process or everything else that you need to do. Mm. But as an industry, it's totally unregulated. So some of the biggest organisations, and there's two sort of assurance schemes within the funeral industry, today have called for the industry to be regulated because you've got funeral homes around the country now at pains to say either A, if they've got legacy in their title, as this firm up in oh. Hull and East Yorkshire had, mm. that they've got no association with that whatsoever and that just because the word legacy in there does not mean that they've got any sort of connection. And B, you've got others who say, we have signed up to these professional schemes, we are carrying out funerals to the highest standards and what you are seeing happening up north is not reflective of what's happening in the industry, but it's truly just, it, it beggars belief that something like this would be happening nowadays. And very often when people are organising a funeral for a loved one, you choose the best known funeral directors, don't you? Because you choose the one that you've heard of, obviously you can't choose it if you haven't heard of it. You choose the one that other people in the area have used, you choose the one that's catered for your family when there's been a previous bereavement. And I believe that in Hull and that part of the country, this particular funeral director is extremely well known and has been going for quite some time and is a family firm. And, you know, it's the kind of choice that many people will have made. They will have thought, oh, yes, well, of course, them. Yeah, and you can tell how popular they've been because they have three branches. Mm -hmm. So not only covering Hull, but also covering East Yorkshire. So a wide geographical area, which means more worry, more upset for the local community yes. and just, I, I, I can't get over it. It's outrageous, it's absolutely outrageous. Because... I was reading about one lady who lost her father and then five days later her brother and she now thinks that when she was bidding her father farewell at his funeral, and she really was, she was, as anybody would expect, extremely emotional. She was sobbing over the coffin. I mean, as you, as we all have done in our time, I've certainly done that. I buried my mother, exactly the same. You think, my God, that's my mother's remains in there. You feel absolutely terrible. You feel like you're parting with the last kind of, uh, you know, earthly, earthly kind of, part of your mind. It's just horrible, obviously, isn't it? And it's incredibly emotional. And she says now she wonders if the coffin was empty. Imagine that. It's terrible. I know. It's not the type of thing that you just, you would not expect this to happen. No. Out of just basic decency, you would expect that when this happens, we all know how painful it is, that the people that you are paying a service to, yes. and remember, funerals are quite expensive. I was just going to say the same thing. This is not a cheap service. This is very, very expensive. It was interesting, though, that the, the woman who said she now fears that her father's coffin may have been completely empty and has no idea at all if the ashes she received were her brother or were not, no idea, and she's devastated this poor woman who had these two bereavements, you know, so soon after one after the other. But she says, interestingly, that the family running that... Uh, funeral directors, she spoke often to the father and he was very sympathetic, um, very supportive. You know, she could not fault his demeanour on the phone or in person. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, to go to a family-run business as well, that brings a certain level of respect. We're not yeah. talking about a corporation that's oh, behind fly this. By it's night a, thing, it's yeah. a very personal thing, something that you will have used for generations and trust will have been built up. Yeah. It is important to stress, though, that no charges have been laid and there is no guilt as yet associated with what has gone on. So we've got to let that police investigation move through the various stages that it's got to do. But I think when it comes to the human remains, that will be a lot easier for the police to identify. But when it becomes the ashes, there's not a lot of DNA that's left over. How do you distinguish between 
one pot of ashes between a different pot of ashes without being 100% certain of the provenance of where they've come from. And so at the end of all of this, you will still potentially have hundreds, if not thousands of families mm -hmm. never truly knowing whether the person that they've got in an urn or the person that they have scattered is the true person that they bade farewell to. It's a really extraordinary story and obviously we're going to keep an eye on that story because we can't take our eyes off it because it's, it's so horrifying and certainly if anybody watching or listening right now to this programme is among those families and you might well be if you live in that part of the country then our hearts go out to you because we can really imagine what you're going through and it must be absolutely distressing, enormously distressing. So we're really very, very sorry to hear about this.